I can no longer recommend football as a sport for a young person to play. And that's, that's just because of what I know and what I've experienced. That's my truth. What's going on guys? Stolf the Vegan. And I am driving right now. I promise I'm paying attention, but today I wanted to talk to you guys about why I stopped playing football. So I played football for a lot of years and I started when I was pretty young, I was 11 years old. And right from the beginning, I learned that I was pretty good at that sport. I um, had a high aptitude for it. Um, I loved the aggressiveness, the contact, the physicality. And it was just something that it gave me a sense of identity for a long time. And when I was in high school, we were pretty good. And my senior year, we won a state championship. And I actually was voted to the All-State team. But throughout that whole period where I was in high school and I was working hard, on football and I was putting in all this time in the gym I kind of really missed out on a lot of things a big thing was that when I was in high school I, w I didn't go to the high school that I played sports for I went to a technical school which allowed me to play sports for my town which I grew up with all the guys from my town and we formed a pretty close bond when we were younger playing football and it seemed natural that I would go on and, and play with them. And that was a great thing. It was a small group of us. We didn't have a big team. And a lot of us had to play both sides of the ball. But we really grew to rely on each other and form bonds that I still have today. Sorry about that. The camera keeps cutting off. but. That, that was what you would focus on throughout the whole morning or, or late afternoon was your major. So I really had to take a major that didn't jive with me to free up time for football. And I was really good at football. Like I said, I was on the All-State team. I did really well. But in hindsight, and after talking to a lot of people, it was not worth all the time that I was putting into it. Because based on how big I was, how strong I was, I could never have played professionally. And even if I did have a successful college career, football would have taken up so much time because it's football is a sport that you have to dedicate a lot of your time to. It just, it wouldn't have worked out to where I could have taken on a subject of study in school that I could have put a lot of effort into. I would have had to take in class loads that were just really easy. And that's what a lot of athletes do. And that's just something that's not worth your time. If you're paying all that money, well, I could have gotten a scholarship, but still, if you're not gonna play professional sports, you have to do something with your life. And being able to choose something that you're passionate about and really study that, that's that's really important. And football, it just wouldn't have allowed for that. And I also want to talk about the injuries. So football is a sport that you put yourself at tremendous risk for. You have to sacrifice a lot. You have to give up your body. And you have to be willing to hit somebody on every play. The position I was playing, I was playing offensive line, I was a tackle, and I was also a defensive tackle. Now for my size, I was not the biggest one at that position. I'm about a little less than six feet tall. And when I played, I was 230 pounds. And right now, I'm about, right now I'm about 100, 190, 180 something pounds. So just having all that extra weight put my body out of sorts and one of the things that my body was susceptible to was knee injuries so the sport of football 
it requires a lot of lateral motion, which means that you have to be able to move side to side very quickly and stop suddenly. And all the while, you have resistance. Sorry, the camera keeps moving. But all the while, you have resistance, right? Because there's someone who is trying to impose their will on you. There's somebody who's trying to push you back or go through you. And what that does is that puts a huge stress on your joints and, and your ligaments and your body. And one of the injuries that I got was I blew out my knee, quote unquote. What, what that is is that I had a ACL ligament that was completely torn. I tore my medial and lateral meniscus. So the ligament at the inside of my knee and on the outside of my knee was torn as well as the main ligament that holds my femur from hitting my tibia. So basically I had the most severe knee injury you can have. And that was in my sophomore year of playing football. So I had to miss a year of football then. And I came back my junior year after having two knee surgeries. And that junior year, I started every single game at the varsity level. And that I say that like it's an accomplishment because it is an accomplishment. After you haven't played football for a year and then you start playing at a level higher than you've ever played before, that was, no one expected that of me, but it was something that I could do because I had always played football, I had always excelled at football. So even though I was out for a year, I still had that confidence that I could play the sport to a high level. So after that season, we went pretty far. We made it to the state semifinal. And I was relatively injury free, but that in football, you, you always get hurt. Even if you're playing, you're, you're pl always playing through some type of injury, whether it's an elbow, you know, a, a dislocated finger or something, or a rolled ankle. You know, these things happen and they're regular to have some type of sprain or, or something going on. But that doesn't count as an injury. So my senior year, what I did was I put on about 30 to 40 pounds in the off season just to specifically prepare for being a lineman and playing at a high level. And what happened was in the preseason, I got a knee injury. And this knee injury bothered me the rest of the entire season. And despite having that knee injury, I played every game except the first game. I had to miss the first game because of the knee injury just to get cleared by a doctor. And after that injury, I, I didn't have the same power. I didn't have the same speed. I was playing maybe at 70% the whole season. And despite that, I made All-State. So as well as we won the state championship. So even from there, I was looking at the possibility of a, a good you know, college career of playing football, but I had to, a decision to make because realizing all the hardship I'd been through, all the injuries and the amount of time that I had to dedicate to football, I just didn't see it adding up as something that was worth me doing. It was worth pursuing in college because football is football at whatever level. And if I went on to play college football, I could have expected a lot more injuries, maybe a significant back injury, maybe some concussions. You know, concussions are things that happen to every football player if you're, if you're really putting the effort forward. And now they're finding a disease called CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is even if there isn't a, even if you don't have a significant hit or blow to your head, you can still have severe brain damage because all those little hits that you have, especially for alignment, those accumulate in your brain and they actually form scar tissue or protein plaques 
uh, similar to the amyloid plaque that you would have in your brain if you had Alzheimer's. So a lot of former football players have Alzheimer's, dementia-like symptoms after years of playing a sport where they're made, where they're making, you know, impact on every play. So you put two and two together and I can no longer recommend football as a sport for a young person to play. And that's, that's just because of what I know and what I've experienced. That's my truth after playing the game and loving the game, I still love football, you know? I, I would still love to play the game of football, but if I had the chance to go back, truthfully, I would probably pursue a different sport. I probably would wrestle or do some type of track and field because the, the type of what football required me to do to be good was to change my body composition, right? I had to put on all this weight that my body just didn't didn't want. And it put so much pressure on my joints that I got a significant injury. So, not to say, not to discourage you from playing football or to say football is bad, but for me, it's something that Football has given me a lot of gifts. It's given me self-discipline. It's given me confidence. It's taught me not to, to be fearless, really, in life. Because hesitation or you know overthinking things. Because in football, you can't overthink or hesitate. You have to just go. You know, you have to follow your instincts. You have to react within an instant, or else you're too late, or you miss a step or you can put one of your teammates at risk. So you, you can never hesitate like that when you're playing football. So football taught me a lot of good lessons, but ultimately I decided that it was a bad idea to do that in college because college is serious. College is being a professional student. College is saying you're gonna pay all this money to get a return on investment in the future. And I didn't see myself becoming a professional player, so the return on investment was not there for me. It might be there for you. So just to say that that's something that you have to take into consideration. I know a lot of good, good football players, great players who went on to play in college, didn't get to work on really what they wanted to school-wise, didn't have the ability to to put the time in because they weren't geniuses and maybe you are a genius maybe you can balance a full-time varsity college sport with the class low that you want but most people can't to be completely honest most people won't be able to do that but I talked to a lot of people and it just it wasn't worth that worth the sacrifice for them so you know, especially when you're in high school, you're a young kid. You don't, you don't know what you want to do for the rest of your life at that point. So don't follow any one person's advice. Really reflect on it yourself. See if that's something you want to do. If it is, if that's what you love, that's your passion, then pursue it to the fullest extent. But if there's other things in your life that you're not getting a chance to do, you're missing out on, then you're going to have to make a hard choice. Right? But always think on things, always reflect. And don't feel that you have a responsibility to someone when you're only a high school kid. When you're a high school kid and you're studying and, and you're trying things and you wanna learn what, what's right for you, the biggest responsibility you have is to yourself. That's your biggest responsibility to do everything that you wanna do at that young age and set yourself up for the future that you want. That's the biggest responsibility. You don't owe the coach anything you don't owe your teammates anything you owe it to yourself to find out what you're passionate about and pursue that to the fullest extent if it's football then go for it man but if you want to do something else then you owe it to yourself to go after that as well if you love graphic design if you love biology if you love whatever it might be medicine or just anything 
go for that and be passionate and try new things and don't be afraid to fail. Failure is the biggest teacher in life. So that was a little rant about my past and if you're still watching, I really appreciate you being here and, and sharing and watching this video. So take care guys and hopefully I'll see you again soon.